All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, our apologies for the hold up here. We will be getting this race on our way shortly. We just had to deal with a couple of technicalities here, but everything has turned out all right. Yes. Now, of course, with um, with the current version of the randomizer, um, Uncle, having a wide assortment of weapons, for this race, I'd like to see the... Um, I'd like to see the Cane of Burner. I personally have not seen a Cane of Burner opening, so it would be rather interesting to see how our runners will tackle that, as it is one of the more difficult weapons due to... Um, due to its extremely low damage, as well as moderate uh, magic costs. I personally enjoy seeing either of the canes show up at Uncle. It's just, you have to really watch your magic, and knowing where the magic pots are in the back half of the sewers really comes in handy. Definitely so, and welcome my co-commentator, Chensi. How are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm wanting to strangle my computer, but we're all good now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything seems to be running smoothly. Uh, we... The race should be getting started soon here. Huh? Bear with us for just a second here. Huh? No, unfortunately, the ice rod cannot be at the uncle due to it not actually dealing damage. As the race does get on our way here, huh? we'll get to see what the first chest will hold it for our runners. I believe in the initial planning stages of this, they did think about including the ice rod, but there were some rooms that would have been impossible to pass. Yes, one that springs to mind immediately is the uh, vanilla map chest, because there is only one guard in there. So if you didn't get a, a bomb drop, there is pretty much nothing you can do with the ice rod. As we do find a big 20 in, um, in Link's hut here. Now, the weapon is going to be the Fire Rod. An excellent choice indeed. One of the more powerful weapons in the game will give our runners a full magic refill here. Of course, the downside of the Fire Rod is that it takes... <laughs> wow. And the lamp, apparently. A vanilla lamp. That is quite a find here. Of course, we will not be seeing any dark rooms. Now, to continue with my statement, um, the fire rod does have a rather long uh, kill animation where it takes a um, quite a while uh, for the sprite to disappear. And in case the room requires all enemies to be to be killed, that that might slow down our runners. Yeah, that weighs one of the interesting quirks is that if there is an enemy on screen or a projectile from an enemy on screen, it will not unlock the room until it's gone. Yes, that is correct. Um, all of the sprites that are associated with a certain enemy need to be cleared from the screen before the game considers the objective completed, which is just one of those um, uh, little quirks of this game as well. Of course, we are not yet done with the little quirks of this game, as there is a lot more to come. You can see that the door takes a little while longer to open as we do get the smoky hair, of course. I do think it's interesting that both of our runners are using Final Fantasy sprites for this race. No, that is true. I didn't even notice that. I don't play Final Fantasy myself, but I believe that is a... <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to make so many people upset, but I believe that's a, a Moogle on the right here. I am not familiar with the left side character, so maybe um, uh, Chenzi or one uh, one of her chat members can uh, can enlighten me about Final Fantasy lore here. Yes, that would be the Black Mage from the original Final Fantasy. 
Ooh, as we do find the flippers. Now, a question I have is, can make this swim? This one can now. Now, with the flippers, that does put um, Zora within logic. So our runners are looking to gain quite a lot more rupees than they have now, of course. Um, during the Kakariko loop, uh, they will need a hundred rupees to get the bottle vendor's item. But after that, it is pretty much a race to that 500 mark. It'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, Zora holds any progression for us for this seed. Of course, the easiest way of doing that would be to find one of the 300 rupee drops somewhere on the map. But it's anyone's guess is where those might be. Definitely. I believe that there are only um, two instances of a 300 rupee drop, so they will be pretty far and scarce. So it will be interesting to see if we actually do find a 300 rupee drop, as Fujita does get a bomb drop here, which will give him access to the three chests in the back of escape. Now, of course, um, Tiro still has to go to the, uh, the silver sequence, so it is highly likely that he will also find a bomb, but it will, uh, we will just have to see uh, if the rats are favourable today. Zero knowing exactly where that magic drop is gets a little bit of a refill. Now, Zero is already down by about half his magic meter in. So uh, Fujita will be able to um, to be a little bit more liberal here with this fire rod shot. Well, and this far into the sewers, the only enemy you really need to defeat is the rat with the key at this point. Yes, of course, with the fire rod, I doubt that it will be a a lot of trouble for either of our runners here. Of course, the fire rod being one of the more brutal methods of, um, of extermination here as to successfully gets the key as well as for key and And it's looking like Chu's hunting for that bomb and finds it just in the nick of time. Who luckily advances the price far enough here to get a quick bomb job. Now it'll be interesting to see what is back here. So we find our first sword and the hammer as well. Wow, what a back of escape that is. Well, when you're trying to rescue the princess, you want as many weapons as you can get your hands on. That is very true, of course. Um, they're getting the sword and thereafter immediately the hammer that does kind of uh, put the sword in. Uh, at the back of your arsenal because the um, uh, the hammer will do damage equivalent to the tampered sword so in uh, more circumstances runners will opt to uh, to pull out the hammer to kill enemies as it is significantly faster as the light lighter sword It looks like Chiru is heading up to the Lumberjack Cave to see whether or not this is in fact an Aghanim Seed. Yes, at this point um, we will most likely see both the um, both the Lost Woods uh, Kakarik as well as uh, South Shalop as they are the more lucrative items. As we do get the, um, the first uh, triple here, only a bundle of arrows. Of course, arrows are not a bad thing to have, as we do have a piece of heart at the Lumberjack Cave. We'll have to see uh, Vegeta's check here. Maybe he'll give us a bit more of a clearer full heart, actually. Of course, while a full heart container is one of the more valuable um, heart items to pick up, I doubt that either of the runs will um, get rid of Aghanim just for that heart. And it looks like two coming across another piece of heart in the Lost Woods, opting to pass it up. I think he's gambling on finding more heart containers down the road instead. 
Definitely, both of our runners opting to nope on out of that piece of heart there. As we do see that the next level triple is uh, a bunch of Pfizer's here. Now, one thing to note is uh, Fajita and I did get a lucky 8 bomb drop um, right before he entered the Sanctuary. Now, uh, throughout Kakariko, only uh, uh, only three bombs are needed, but if something is out of the race game, then that might come back to, um, to hit Tiro here. So it'll be, it will be interesting to see if he will use his rupees to buy some more bombs. And there's one of those 300 rupee drops I was talking about. As well as a bottle, which of course is a very nice safety to have, especially with that uh, red red potion in there, which will heal up all of your hearts. But that also um, opens up the Sickets Prize, which uh, is only accessible with a bottle, of course. I would like to point out how beautifully synced our runners are right now. Even doing map checks at the exact map check same here. time. I do believe I saw a normal crystal at both Eastern as well as Desert with the green pendant at Tower of Hera. Now, of course, the Tower of Hera is uh, one of the more out-of-the-way locations. So it will be interesting to see if our runners will choose to dip into a pendant dungeon here. Of course, we are still quite some time away from uh, from getting up there, logically, anyway. Of course, with that 300 drop, we'll have enough to buy the flute. That, wow, that has to be the most optimal location to get this item. We'll be able to activate that immediately. Which, curiously enough, both gives them direct access to Death Mountain. Now, they will still need either the hookshot or the mirror to get to the Tower of Hera, but it is still something that they're probably going to be putting on their radar at this point. Yes, definitely. Death Mountain is now technically within logic. Of course, I doubt that our runners are going to forgo the South Shore um, and the Kakariko loop here. We might even see a dip into Eastern before we get to see any of Death Mountain. as we find the silver arrows. Of course, a really nice upgrade to have. Unfortunately though, neither of our runners have the bow to make use of that. But we will have to find it due to the fact that Eastern Palace is a crystal. Tiru opting to restock on some bombs with some of the extra rupees he's found. Both of our runners here checking the back of the tavern here. Just a bomb upgrade, not what they were looking for, unfortunately. He tonight finding a heart container in the library. So while he will need the boost to get that, it doesn't look like something I'd come back for. No, well it is nice to um, to add a full heart to your counter there. Going back here just for that will be um, uh, will be the least optimal play here. Because if we find the mirror, we could we could um, possibly combo it with uh, with the frog. But we have quite some time away as we still need access to the Dark World in the first place here. We did find the hammer, which is part one to the Dark World puzzle, but it's going to take some time here. Tiro finding a little bit of disappointment at the end of the maze race there. Yes, Tiro opted to uh, forgo the checking of of the of the price in favor of um, instantly going going through with the race 
as Vegeta Knight finds the second 300 rupee drop. That combined with the flippers means Zoro could be checked a whole lot sooner than we expected. Indeed, it will be interesting to see um, whether our runners will opt to leave the Arshot Cave, which is one of the more out-of-the-way uh, locations. Um, if there is something something huge in the Arshot Cave that could come back to haunt our runners here. Only time will tell as we set foot into Mini Moldum Cave here. So far, not much of anything to be found. So while we have a little bit of downtime here, what are one of the items that you think are going to be the, the the thorn in their side for the seed? I want to see a solar grade in Ganon's Tower. A required solar grade to go into Ganon's Tower to then get the big chest with the Master Sword. Nope, never mind. We... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, shut well, that down pretty quickly. <laughs> that went right out the window there as, as the old man under the bridge gives us a second sword upgrade here. Of course, both veterans will be very happy to find that as it is very much necessary to even complete this game because Ganon is programmed not to take damage from the fighter sword. And even with the master sword, only an actual spin slash will hurt him. As we do get to see a... an ice rod gate check here. though only bombs for today. Using some bombs to get some bombs. Pretty fair exchange, I'd say. Oh, that crap. Oh, Tira has to be careful here. Of course, both of our runners still on green mail. Those crowds will do two full hearts of damage. And it looks like Fajita is on his way to Zora and the Waterfall Cave. It does look like that indeed, as he has over 700 rupees, we'll have, uh, we'll have no trouble paying off the Zora item here. As we do get the Waterfall Fairy check with the mirror, which of course uh, at the moment does not do very much for our runners, but that does give us access to the Tower of Power already. Tiru opting instead to go to Death Mountain to rescue the old man. Yes, and of course, due to the fact that we did find the lamp pretty early, this is in sequence still. Even without having the the glass, because uh, because our runners found the flute in Kakrika Village, that does put Death Mountain immediately within Lodu. Unfortunately, though, takes a sky cabbage to the face. Actually, find blue mail here for Fujita Knight, which is a pretty fair deal. Thankfully for Tiru, it was right after getting the old man to his cave, so he was just a simple restart away from where he was. Now, because our runners uh, have the hammer, I do believe that they have access to the eastern part of Death Mountain if they mirror... If, if they use the mirror to um, get towards Hera, I believe they can use the hammer on the right side of the bridge there. Instead, uh, Tira opting to uh, 
Fogosi Tower Power for now in favor of Zora. Well, he has to. He didn't pick up the mirror yet. That is absolutely correct. My apologies. Meanwhile, though, this is Vegeta's first visit to the to the Mountaineers, so we may see that exact strat I mentioned earlier. Yes, having the mirror and the hammer does give them access to Paradox Cave, which, right after Tower of Para, makes really good sense. Yes, now, one of the scary things is is that um, our runners have found both of the fire sources, which does put the, the basement chest within logic. Now, although that is not necessarily a bad thing, it is uh, one of the more time-consuming chests within the Tower of Para, so if at all possible, our runners would like to skip that. As we do get our seven seconds of arguably, arguably the best music in the game. Fajita making his way into the basement and finding nothing but a burrito. Fortunately, though, it does find the big key. That does mean that uh, for now, the basement chest is not necessarily required. Mirror in hand will most likely opt for the exact same strats so we'll be following in Vegeta Knight's nice footsteps. Oh, that's adorable. Sorry. <laughs> that cat is just adorable. Yeah, I do love the, the bunny sprites on a lot of these uh, custom sprites that they've introduced. Yes, and speaking of, uh, uh, of sprites here, we have a wonderful, wonderful community of, of sprite creators here, which put a lot of love, time, and effort into creating uh, new and exciting custom sprites here, which are uh, fully loaded with uh, with bunny beam animation, death animation, as well as, as a whole host of um, different colorings for the different male upgrades here. I've actually had the benefit of watching a streamer friend of mine test one of these sprites, and I, I thought it was pretty neat. Oh yes, the amount of possibilities that um, that this game allows, allows you to have, of course, certain palettes will give a little bit of issue with different sprites here, but meanwhile, G and I, no sweat, takes down Moldorm to get the green pendant. And with that big 20, he does get both items, which means there is no reason to go into the basement. That is correct. In fact, uh, that means that the small key itself is in the basement, which is also um, one of the more recent updates is um, that items can be stealth locked within chest. Now, uh, what that means is uh, certain dungeons have chests which are locked by, for example, a small key door here in Tower of Hera, as well as these sound. Now, if apologies for that, if um, if the small key happens to be uh, placed inside of these chests, the runners will not be excluded from any content from the dungeon. So therefore, it is logically possible to have self-locked items. It is worth noting that the Swamp Palace Big Key and the Skull Woods Big Key can also be locked inside the big chests. That is also correct. Of course, uh, Swamp Palace and Skull Woods have, um, have no big key doors. So the only reason to get the big key is to gain access to the big chest. Meanwhile, oh, Tiro here has to be careful not to get knocked off the platform here. As we do get to see a uh, a paradox cape here from Vegeta. 
Mordor not cooperating and sticking on the left side. Yeah, it looks like Tyr is having a little bit of trouble cleaning up this Smoldorn fight. Oh, careful. Oh, you always hate to see that when they get pushed up against the uh, against the pit like that. Of course, if you have your sword out and... God, I thought I'd done that. If you hold your... <laughs> sorry, I'm professional, sorry. Um, if you hold your sword out while you are uh, getting bobbed by Muldorm and you're holding in the opposite direction, you will not fall off. Meanwhile, <laughs> I've been trying to get that story out. Meanwhile, we did fight the hookshot as well as the moon pearl. Now, that does mean that we have one item away from Dark Hole Access, which will be the mitts or the uh, power glove, rather. Looks like Vahita Knight is opting to go towards the desert now, finding the Tempered Sword on the desert ledge. A very interesting find indeed, as we do get a, a Gainas check here. Meanwhile, Tira makes his way through a bootless spiral cave. The mushroom, of course, uh, one of the more favorite items of Chaz, I presume. Of course, the mushroom uh, will not directly unlock an item, instead requiring you to uh, go on a little bit of a fetch quest. Having the flute this early, though, makes it quite trivial. That is true, as Fujita is showing us now, it is a simple flute over to number two here. Meanwhile, Tira will be receiving his moon pearl as well as his hook shot here. Be interesting to see what this mushroom gives us. Well. Wow. This looks like it's time to go fast. Got to go fast, ladies and gentlemen. We have found the boots. Now, of course, the boots in and of itself does unlock a couple of locations here near the sanctuary. But that, but it also may be required to complete the desert palace. Because we have, we have yet to get into desert palace due to we, uh, due to the runners not having either uh, the Titan's Mitts or the Book of Medora. Now, I have to imagine that the number of spots left to check is starting to dwindle, which means it's looking more and more likely that this could be an Agadem seed after all. Yes, if there is something on the pyramid here, at this point it could pretty much only be a club upgrade at the, um, at the pyramid here. Of course, we still have yet to explore the eastern area, uh, so, uh, both of our runners decided to forgo that. Now, of course, with, with our green panel in hand, we do get to immediately tax our Astralat. Only a fiver today as we get the three just in the back here. A lot of red today as we find the cape. Another one of these uh, fetch quest items. Well, it looks like Eastern Palace is their last hope. Having the lamp means that they can at least check all of the locations short of Armos Knights, but there's only three items, and one of them could be locked. That is true. Until we find the bow, uh, it is actually uh, physically impossible to, um, to gain access to the Armos Knights room. Now, of course, it is still very much possible to find the bow within the Eastern Palace, as it is in the vanilla game. Yeah. 
Bombos being the first item up for grabs doesn't really help with progression at this point, though. Definitely not. Ash, we still have to find out uh, whether or not uh, Misery Maya and Total Rock are even required dungeons as well as, on top of that, needing to know what medallion is required to get in. Item number two turns out to be a big 20, which means there is more and more hope that this could in fact be an Aghanim Seed. It is starting to look that way. Our runners would rather not have to deal with Aghanim though, but it looks like Tiro is going to make the gamble and, um, and take down Aghanim immediately. Now, this might pay off actually if that happens to be a required item on the pyramid here. But you are finding the big key in probably the best location right before the big chest there. Well, the other benefit of fighting Aghanim this early is that even if the pyramid item isn't important, it still gives him direct access to Pod, and he does have the hammer. That is also true. Defeating Agnim will open the Dark World portal at the castle entrance. Meanwhile, Fujita Knight making his way through the Dark Room here gets through without much trouble here. Of course, both our owners having the lamp dark rooms will not be any trouble. So you get to see that the last item is Sanctuary Heart. Which means it looks like Tiru made the right play for now. That is correct, as we see Fujita Knight heading up to um, to follow behind Tira here in um, climbing the Agamemnon's Tower here. Tira using that fire rod again, just like in Escape, to, um, to easily clear out these rooms as well. Once again, that fire rod death animation taking quite a long time to get those doors open. Yes, of course, that is one of the drawbacks. The advantage, though, is that pretty much everything dies in one hit. Although Tiro catches Agamem uh, half-handed, teleporting away one of the uh, one of the maidens. Of course, I think now, the only question at this point is how many blue balls is Agamem going to give our runners today? That is an interesting, interesting question. I'm going to go with the average choice of three. I think it's going to be a little ruder than that. I'm thinking five or six. Ooh, aiming high. Well, that's number one already. Now, one thing to note is that um, RNG, number two there, uh, that RNG is set when a seed is generated. So both of our runners will get the exact same uh, amount of blue balls as well as Ganon teleports here. So that there will not be an unfair advantage to um, whoever gets lucky. There's our third blue balls. And, <laughs> and our fourth. Looks like my prediction is already out the window as we get another lightning phase here.
And there's number six. Will we get more? No, it does look like that is all the blue balls that Hagnim is going to shoot for us today. As um, Tiro will end up on the pyramid. We'll be checking out uh, the pyramid item here shortly. As we do get a dark belt map check, uh, five six crystals at uh, Swamp and Skull Woods, as well as pendants at Palace of Darkness and Ice Palace which allows us to pretty much paint in all the other numbers for our other regular crystals. Only 300 rupees here on the pyramid. That must mean that our progression will be in the Palace of Darkness, as the catfish is currently unreachable. It is nice having those extra rupees because you can make your way to the potion shop and pick up a little bit of safety in the way. Definitely true. Of course, we already have have one of uh, one of four bottles here. Of course, it was already filled with a red potion. Uh, so we do get a hype gift check from Tiru here. Huh? And it looks like the only item worth mentioning is the swag net. As well as the single arrow, which is a very special unique item because it is the only one in the game. But other than that, it is just your normal standard arrow. Of course, our runners still can't do anything with it because both of our runners have yet to find the bow as I do believe we see Tiro here taking the gamble into Swamp Palace. It's not a bad move. It has a very high concentration of items and he has everything he needs to defeat it. So it's I, I can't say I would do anything different. That is true. It is one of the more lucrative dungeons at uh, six unique items. And as well as having acquired the hookshot in Death Mountain, I believe, he does have the ability to defeat the boss. Vegeta Knight forgetting that, uh, no, you do not have a glove upgrade. And Swamp Palace paying off already, rewarding Tiru with the Ice Rod. That is indeed a very required item, as we did find out that Turtle Rock is one of our critters. A very nice rod indeed. Meanwhile, though, we do see um, Vegeta and I here using the hookshot to hookshot his way over to the uh, northern side of the Dark World here. It looks like Vegeta Knight's opting to check some of the overworld locations before heading into any dungeons. Yes, of course. Also, with the um, with the latest update of Logic, the probability of items uh, being in overworld versus dungeon has been balanced out. So, as we do find the the red boomerang here in the King's Tomb. I happen to be a part of the very vocal minority that actually prefers the red boomerang. I mean, it has its uses, I suppose. It does lag the game quite a lot due to the beautiful sparkling effect that it has. But also, um, uh, one of the, I guess you could call them drawbacks, is that it has a very long range, thus it takes uh, quite some time to return to you if you do end up misthrowing. 
Now, of course, other than that, it is completely identical to the blue boomerang. Kiru is opting to skip the left half of the Swamp Palace and instead going straight to Argus. Finding the Red Mail and the fourth sword upgrade at this point. Double chests full of red. Of course, the runners will be happy to receive uh, both the Red Mail as well as the Tempered Sword, as well as another bottle here. Now, uh, of course, the level 3 sword is not required to beat the game, but in terms of uh, time for Ganon fights, the difference between Master Sword and Demp Sword is quite significant. So, of course, our runners will be very glad to pick up an extra sword upgrade here. And I can imagine that neither runner will skip the gold sword on the desert ledge once they get either the book or the Titan Smiths. That is true. We have found all of these sword upgrades at this point. It is only a matter of reaching them at this point. So we do see a Skull Watch check here from Fakir Knight. Because with that uh, fire rod that we received from our dear uncle, we'll be able to full play this dungeon. As well as more importantly, something that I just noticed, uh, both Swamp Palace and Skulls are the 5 to 6 crystals. So that does give a little bit more value to uh, both Tiru's as well as Fajita and I's play here. I have a feeling that they'll be swapping places here in just a few minutes. That does seem to be a lively probability here, as Fiji and I gets uh, one of the few items that is guaranteed to be vanilla here. Yes, that chest will always be a small key in order to prevent possible soft locks. Tira, in the meantime, taking care of some overall mirror locations so here, we'll be checking um, K45 in her. Only finds a big 20, as for G and I, finds a small key in the big chest. There is our other boomerang. Now, I'm a little worried about Fajita, Knight, Fajita Knight's health at this point. Skull Woods is not an easy dungeon with low health. Yes, even with that blue mail, everything in the Dark World does a lot of damage here. Has a little bit of trouble with the Gittos here. Uh, Satoru digs up a tiny shield here. Oof, Fujita has to be careful. Does get through the room with a little trouble though. Of course, um, at this low of a health point, I do expect a death wolf hit to regain some health. As well as a quick wall back to the start. That is one of the things I like about Skull Woods. If you ever have to restart, you don't usually end up too far away from where you were. Yes, of course, opting to um, save the menu to the, to the mirror. to be careful not to shock himself too much here. Uh, Siro is going to 
use his boots to check out a couple of bomb locations here. Here tonight, heading into the Mafia fight. <laughs> Looks like Mafia was being a little less than cooperative, staying up near the top side of the fight. tonight into the Mothla fight there has to run out of magic unfortunately will have to use uh, sword slashes thankfully though has little trouble taking down the moth for only the map but more importantly the uh, 5-6 crystal here Meanwhile, Chiru is making his way into the Palace of Darkness. Let's uh, let's hope that this first item is a key and he's not bow locked. It look Palace of Darkness is not yet bow locked, as we do receive the small key to open this small door, or just normal door rather. Of course, this does not give us access to the entire dungeon due to the fact that we are required to use the bow a few times. As we do find our first glove upgrade. Now, to thinking uh, on what you should do now, because a lot of the world just uh, just opened up as well. Now, there are quite a few more items left to find in the Palace of Darkness, but having the myths gives him plenty of access to other, more important locations. Yes, of course, one of those locations that we alluded to earlier is the Pathless location. Which does require the gloves to uh, lift the upcoming rock here. Meanwhile, we see Fujita taking a look into the Village of the Outcasts. It'll be interesting to see what we find here. So far, only an error upgrade. Of course, still without the bow, not much use. Says a lot of love today. It is interesting seeing these runners take two very different routes. It's going to be interesting to see where they meet back up again. Yes, of course, this is the most exciting for us, the, the viewers here, as we pretty much get uh, double the exploration for only half the time. As uh, and I opts to um, take a quick peek into the Thief Stand Dungeon here. Now, with that hammer in hand, that does allow every chest to be checked, including the big chest. Now, of course, it is still very possible that the small key is self locked in that big chest, as we mentioned earlier, with the Tower of Hera uh, uh, small key.
So far, not much of value here in the front part of Steve's stand. We'll be, we'll be looking to, uh, to explore the back part a little bit more as Fujita Knight does opt to um, continue on here. Meanwhile, Turo taking care of, uh, of some overall locations with that mirror. We'll be receiving his red boomerang. Yeah, at this point, we are still looking for the bow. But, um, we don't know which medallions are needed, and we still need the can of Samaria, so we've got quite a bit to go before we hit any kind of go mode. Yes, it is definitely uh, still anyone's race at this point. Of course, due to the uh, sheer nature of the randomizer here, uh, pretty much anything can happen to, uh, to either of these runners. course now that does put up a, um, a very inter interesting question here what could be on the pedestal at this point i believe the only required item that can be on the pedestal uh, is if uh, either quake or ether is required to get into our pendant um, sorry into our crystal dungeons or um, if the routing in Ice Palace turns out just right, it could still be that the King of Samaria is on the pedestal. There's one other scenario that I can think of where the uh, Titan's Myths are in Desert Palace, but the book is on the pedestal. That is indeed very true as well. We still have yet to yet to find the book or the myths, so we have zero access to the Desert Palace right now. Of course, at this point in the race, it is uh, still rather early to um, to make wild accusations, but of course, we like to speculate. As uh, Vegeta does pick up the Maiden in Distress here. He's checking the big chest. I don't know if he realized. Oh wait, no, never mind. He doesn't have the buffs yet. Yes, yeah, so that does mean that you will have to go around. Which um, I believe in the Game Boy Advance remake of uh, of A Link to the Past that is required due to the fact that the developers uh, switched the um, uh, uh, the block there from. Uh, requiring just level one to requiring the time smith. Meanwhile, the Gita Knight in um, the Legend of Zelda Bullet Hell to the Past does pull out the cape just for safety. Don't blame him at all. This fight can go can go south pretty fast. Thankfully, though, it takes care of blind. Sees the map, but more importantly, his second crystal. Speaking of crystals, it looks like Tiru is on his way to Makila, which will give him the other 5 6 crystal. We could be seeing a pyramid check here in a few minutes. That is true, Vegeta Knight has, uh, has yet to go into Swamp Palace. As Turo enters the Mothlet fight. Of course, now having Redmill as well as uh, the Tempered Sword, by no means will this fight be an easy one, but as you saw there, if you blinked, you might have missed it. Mol Moldorm? Hello? <laughs> Mothlet is already dead as the second Red Crystal has been collected in. So, as you as you suggested, we may see a fat fairy check.
a decent night's hair performing the uh, Southern Dark World loop here. We'll be receiving his Blue Boomerang. Let's hope he makes his way into Swamp Palace next because there's quite a few things there that he's going to need. Definitely. With where he is headed, that does look like... Oh no, he has yet to check out Hive Cave. Of course, uh, we as commentators know that Hive Cave, besides the bug net and the single arrow, does not contain anything really except for a heart refill here as Fikita Knight gets another multiple of four. That's the pieces of heart here. As you mentioned earlier, it does look like Jesus and I will be tackling the Swarm Palace here. Meanwhile, Chiru is finishing up his trip through the Village of Outcasts, finding the Big 20 in the brewery. Yes, why that is called the brewery is honestly beyond me. I would have called it the Dark World Bumble Hut, but I guess you could call it a brewery. I think the literal only reason is because there are barrels in it. I mean, that's basically a brewery, right? Just a room with, with some barrels. As we do see Tyria uh, taking a peek also into Thief's Town. Of course, Fiji tonight also picking up his Ice Rod. We'll be happy to get that item out of the way as it's pretty much only required for the final boss of Tell Rock. Now, what that means is that it can pretty much be anywhere. Anywhere but the um, uh, but the prize of the boss or Ganon's tower, if Turtle Rock is a crystal. I do think it's interesting the the certain setups that are required for certain items to appear in Ganon's tower. For example, if Meyer was a crystal, or sorry, a pendant, you could find the flute in Ganon's tower. That would be quite a turnaround seed here. Of course, nothing that a runner would want, but I'm pretty sure chat would be pretty hyped about a forged uh, double dip Ganon's tower. Does look like we are going to get a left side, uh, a, a left side swamp check here from Vegeta. I'm not sure if uh, Tiro checked the left side or not after he defeated Argus. I don't believe he did. No. No, these are two items we have yet to see. So, if Tiro's gamble of leaving these two chests uh, might actually come back to bite him there. Fiji tonight, remembering to um, to flick the switch again. Of course, if that switch is left untouched, um, you will only do that once. And I will point out once uh, once Fiji tonight gets to that. But well, that is a very important step in getting both the left side items. 
In all honesty, the entire left side of Swamp Palace is surprisingly technical. You have to do everything in a very specific order. And if you don't, you definitely will the next time. Yes, it is definitely one of the more uh, complicated routings here. As we will see the first chest here, which contains some magic potion. Of course, a very nice item to have, although not required, as the second item is only a dungeon map here. So it looks like Chiru is not going to be missing those two chests anytime soon. Yes, we'll definitely not be going back for those items. Neither will he go back into Thieves Town as he is about to take on Blind here. Of course, when done correctly, this fight um, will be completely scripted. Of course, if a run has happened to, to miss a slash, that will throw off the script as we see here with uh, Blind moving to the bottom. But thankfully, with the amount of hearts that we have received as well as Red Mill, this hopefully will not be any trouble as we do see some see some cage rats here for the, for the final hit. Now, Blind is one of the more special bosses in the game uh, by means that it does not matter what kind of sword you have, Blind will always take three damage uh, then move on to the next phase, takes another 3 damage, then on to the next phase, etc. until repeated 3 times. Yeah, I heard a very interesting explanation of that when I was just starting in my randomizer days. Blind has 9 HP and takes 1 point of damage from everything. That is the basic gist of it indeed, as Vegeta Knight does pick up his red mail as well as red sword here. Meanwhile, Vegeta into the Argus fighter. Armed with the hookshot, it looks like Chiru is going to be making his way to the east side of Death Mountain. Definitely not a bad choice as we get our first spike cave checker. Of course, with that bottle that is officially within Logic, as well as having the cape. As we see uh, Vegeta taking down Argus here for the big key. Now, so far, Tiro has opted to forgo the Cursed Fairy here, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see whether or not Vegeta Knight uh, decides to decide to check it out immediately or prioritize uh, other dungeons first. Look, looks like they will be heading into the House of Darkness loop here. Fred Heater Knight will be pretty happy to pick up his gloves here in pod. We'll see if he stays long enough to check some of the other items though. Yes, we have definitely still have a lot of items left in the Pants of Darkness here. As we do see Tiru uh, finally opting to use that big bomb he earned from his 5-6 uh, crystals here. tonight on his way to get his small key here. And we'll find out what's hidden in the pyramid in just a few seconds. Yeah, 
And it looks like it's just 51 rupees. Of course, not a bad find, but not what our runners is looking for though, as Fiji the Knight picks up the glove here. Also has a little bit of second guessing here on the best course of action. Does decide to continue on with dungeon exploration here, as it does look like uh, Tiru is going to head back into Palace of Darkness to finish what he started long ago. Great awareness here from our runners as well, knowing where the uh, fairy bomb, bomb trees are. Of course, those could possibly um, save your life more than once. It'll be interesting to see if either of our runners use the potion glitch to access the right side of the Palace of Darkness. That would indeed be an interesting development as they uh, do have the potions necessary to do so, and that will also grant access to the Bolok side of uh, Bolok side of Pod here. Now, for those unfamiliar with the potion camera glitch, um, in the Palace of Darkness, um, if you go to the to the right side downstairs and take the teleporter, uh, you will. Now you will get into a room with a set of three berries, followed by a Mimic room. Now without the bow, the Red Mimic uh, cannot be defeated, as we find Ether in, I believe, the Compass chest here. Um, but what that means is the bow is technically required by Logic to get past... Wow, I cannot finish any story today as we find the Titan Smiths. I have a feeling we just need to get you to keep telling stories so that the runners can find more and more items. That definitely seems to be a recurring pattern here. But once again, as I was saying, <laughs> um, my, that is really throwing up. Both gloves were in Palace of Darkness as well. Um, yes, where was I? My little story. Um, before we find the next major item, I will finish this story. Um, if you use the potion while traversing to the left, um, uh, due to the way that the potion animation works, I believe it um, it will lock the camera on Link's position, which uh, allows you to scroll the camera to the right side of the room. Then using um, uh, then using the mimic mechanics uh, to move the red one off screen, the game will consider. It's unkillable, therefore opening the door that would normally prevent you from leaving. Well, I made it. Meanwhile, though, we did find out another major thing. Ether is required for Misery Maya. Thankfully, though, both of our runners do already have that medallion as we get to see check what gave it from Fujita. Yes, having the Titan Smiths puts both Misery Mire and uh, Desert Palace on the radar. Unfortunately, you can't finish Misery Mire until you find the Canis Samaria, so it looks like that's going to be one of the next items the runners are looking for. It does look like that will be the progression here, as um, we do have access to the level 4 sword here, as well as the entirety of Desert Palace. Tiru, hot on the heels of uh, Fujita Knight here, will be picking up his gold sword and most likely will be heading into this palette as well. Smoky off of the torch does mean that boots were required to finish this dungeon as the big key is going to be behind this locked door here.
I do think it's interesting, as I mentioned earlier, how both runners diverged with completely different routes and are basically a room apart from each other at this point. Yes, so far this has been an extremely close race. Cool, so we are only an hour and 10 minutes in. I still have quite a lot of the um, Dark World dungeons to do here as well as um, uh, finish up the Eastern Palace. Vegeta tonight making his way towards the boss fight here. Unfortunately, we'll not have the um, the quick kill with the silver arrows here. So it will be interesting to see what kind of strat we'll see here from uh, from this Nanmola fight. Well, he has the green potion, so I imagine the fire rod would be one of the faster ways of dealing with Lanmo in this case. That would definitely be the most optimal. It only takes two hits with the fire rod. Because it is a little bit tricky to um, uh, to hit the worms here, as their movement pattern is pretty sporadic. Meanwhile, as Vegeta finishes the fight, Tiro is starting the fight here. We'll be seeing uh, some similar strats here with the Gold Sword. As Tiro swiftly takes down and receives his crystal. Fajita Knight doing a little bit of cleanup, having beaten Len Mollus and opting to skip the big chest the first time around. Looks like Tiro has a different idea as he opts to skip over the Cane of Burner here. Never mind, making a lie out of me once again, going back uh, as we remember that he did not open the big chest. Well, once again, we're starting to run out of locations to check. It looks like the heat tonight is heading to the blacksmith chain here. Yeah, at this point, that is one of the few overall locations that has yet to be checked as well as the hammer packs and the purple chest. As we do see Tiru taking, uh, taking a quick dive there into Maya. Of course, uh, we'll not be able to complete this dungeon as you mentioned earlier due to the lack of the Sumaria Cane here. Of course, uh, this being the vanilla dungeon of the Cane of Sumaria, it could still be anywhere within this dungeon. Meanwhile, a full heart container here in the hammer peg. Cave here. Vegeta opting to pick it up. Not a bad choice though, um, because so far the seed has been fairly moderate with its uh, with the distribution of hearts here. Only now breaking the first line of. Tiro finding the book in Meyer, which gives him access to the tablets at this point, and not really a whole lot else. Yes, it does allow us to receive two more, uh, two more unique items here. Well, that also gives us the ability to see whatever is on the pedestal. It 
it will be interesting to see um, whether or not Turo uh, will capitalize on that immediately. Maybe hoping that, uh, that his play into Maya is the correct one as the um, as the purple chest only rewards with one rupee. tonight making his way over to East Death Mountain here. As to get the get the big key will opt to uh, press on to the vanilla big key chest which is one of the more out of the way chests to get within this dungeon. But of course if something ends up uh, ends up being here it will be well worth it. Good. It looks like Fajita Knight is opting to attempt to open up the Turtle Rock entrance. We still don't know what the medallion is, but chances are he's got it. Yes, at this point, uh, only Quake will gatekeep our runners as we do find out that both the medallions are ether. Of course, Fujita opening up the Tesseract Dungeon for convenience here as still no Canis to Mario. Cave not holding much of value either. Item locations are slowly but surely dwindling pretty low at this point. We will see a hookshot cave check here, um, which is another four items. We did see that the uh, floating island item was just some rupees as we get the powder here, which is another. There it and is. That gives him access to Turtle Rock immediately. It'll definitely be interesting to see Vegeta Knight taking this opportunity to um, to immediately pay the visit here. Now, it is not uncommon here for the boat to be in Turtle Rock itself, so all in all, this is not a bad play. Well, he's already got it unlocked, and he has all the items he needs. At this point, there's nothing stopping him from getting the crystal at all, so I think it's the right move. Definitely, as it looks like that um, Tiru changing his mind. Oh, or changing my mind. No. Nope. Swipe dog dodge here. As we do get to see him uh, hop on over to the east side of Death Mountain here. Yeah, Tiru looks like he's opting to check Super Money Cave from below, whereas Fahita Knight came from the Turtle Rock topside. Yes, yeah, a little bit of route diversion. So at this point, um, if he were to successfully get the block clip that he attempted there, I believe that is faster. I could be mistaken though, I haven't timed it myself. Meanwhile, Tiru will be breaking that uh, 10 heart mark here. As we, as we see PG tonight for progressing his way here through the Turtle Rock, because the infamous change on room, unfortunately giving Fujita a little bit of trouble here as the block gets eaten pretty much instantly. It 
it's always painful watching runners fall to the chain chomps in this room. Definitely, and dare I say, that's got to be Kane. Looks like Tiru is also opting to um, take a peek into Turtle Rock here. Uh, obviously, seeing that he already has the required medallion, so as you said, you have everything to beat the dungeon, so you might as well go ahead and get it out of the way with. Meanwhile, for you tonight, um, stocking up on some safety fairies here. Of course, using that book net that we found earlier. It is worth pointing out that with the Cane of Samaria being found, it does mean that the pedestal is dead. Unfortunately so, but our runners will definitely be happy to, uh, to not have to clear Ice Palace. Or the Palace of Darkness, sir. tonight coming up on the mimic cave shortly here of course mimic cave is um pretty much the only location within the game that also has the exact same requirements as the total of dungeon itself it is not considered part of the dungeon but it is still only accessible via turtle rock Tiru with a very, very nice item dash there. Definitely gained some swag points for the burner dash here. As Vegeta is getting all the bomb drops there, only to find a vanilla piece of heart in, in the Mimic Cave here. Well, at this point, both of our runners only need the bow. So with every location they come across, that's one more location, they, or one less location that they have to worry about. Definitely. At this point in a run, skipping uh, single item locations is a very dangerous gamble to make. Of course, due to the possibility of an item being in that one random chest you decided not to check, that always uh, that always gives you a bad feeling in the in the stomach if that happens. So he and I heading into the dark maze here. Luckily, though, does know the exact optimal route through this maze. As we are about to see the laser bridge here. Now, uh, logically, the laser bridge is within logic due to um, us having found the, the cape earlier. Now, there are ways to check Laser Bridge without any safety items, as long as you know that only the front portion of the laser can actually deal damage to you. Yes, it is another one of the quirky mechanics of this game. The exact same happens with any Firebar Snake. Only the the very front uh, Flame Orb will do damage to, uh, to Link. Vegeta running a bit low on health there. One chest left to check here. 
I think he might just be opting for the death and refill at this point. Yes, that does look like to be the case. He did catch a fairy though, so that will remove one of his uh, one of his safety nets, unfortunately. As we will get to see the Trinax fighter in just a second. Well, he has the Golden Sword and both rods, so he doesn't really need a whole lot of magic to get the fight done. Getting trolled a little bit by the Pokey there, not being able to hit the Crystal Switch. Thankfully though, there is a full magic refill right before the boss fight, which is always nice to get. Three slashes per head hit with the golden sword. And Fajita Knight just barely remembering to switch to his menu before the head starts exploding. One of the other weird quirks about this very well-programmed game is that while there are explosions on screen, you cannot access the item menu at all. Yes, there is just way too much happening, though. Talking about happenings, I hope you didn't blink because phase number two of Trinax has been defeated as we get a big 20 as well as the Tell Rock Crystal there. And still no bow. That is very true. Now, uh, Vegeta Knight's gonna have to go in and um, clear Misery Maya here, but after that, if we do not find the bow, then it's going to come down to maybe that that book that Tira found. Because we also found the powder in in the Hukcho cave, which like, for all intents and purposes could be our our bow location. Now. And of course, it could still be the case that Cold Stare is holding the bow hostage. Oh, that is very true indeed. Because a runner would rather opt to uh, completely skip the Ice Palace, for it is quite the convoluted dungeon to route. But if this seed wants to, it can be it can be pretty cruel there. Of course, Vegeta opting to take a peek into Maya here. As Tiru finishes up phase number one of the Trinex fight. And it looks like we will not see a bird toss from Fajita Knight, unfortunately. is definitely a missed opportunity for some free swag points here but nonetheless uh, Fajita Knight will be taking a dive as well as um, full clearing this dungeon most likely looking for that bow which is still our go mode item at one and a half hours of course comparatively the bow uh, it's not that much required, only for a handful of dungeons here. Now the bow is one of the uh, prestigious items to always be required for every seed due to the fact that there are red mimics in Ganon's tower. Thus every seed is required to at least have the bow. Meanwhile, 
while Tiru finding a little piece of blood here on the ether tablet as Vegeta picks up uh, his book. It looks like Chiru is going to go ahead and clean up Vitreus here. Without the bow, it is a little bit more of a challenge, but having red mail and the golden sword shouldn't be too difficult. Yes, I doubt that either of the two runners are going to have any difficulty taking down the giant eyeball here. Of course, we still have uh, quite a bit of dungeon uh, to go through, both from uh, Fujita's side here. Of course, uh, this is his first uh, first visit here to the uh, to the Misery Mire dungeon, but um, Tiru still has to make his way all the way down to the Vitreous room. And Fujita and I taking a very unfortunate death in the tile room there. It looks like he did only manage to catch one fairy, so he's going to have to start the dungeon over. Especially for Misery Maya, a death can be quite punishing, as the dungeon itself can be pretty linear. Fortunately, though, um, Fujita Knight was not in the... Um, not in the uh, far reaches of the back of the dungeon, but still an unfortunate time loss here. Uh, so we do see Tiru making his way onto the um, Samaria required section here. This does technically put Tiru in the lead. However, with neither player having any clues to where the bow is, that's not going to matter too much. Yes, neither of the runners. Um, uh, are going to uh, uh, forgo any location. Now, I have not been paying too close attention, but um, are we expected to find an item on Vitreus here? I believe both items are in the dungeon itself. Uh, Vitreus will most likely only have a small key. That does mean that our both Russian will either be in an unchecked overall location or as you as you said earlier, within the iced palace. Chiru heads into the Vitreous fight, opting to tank the damage and use uh, Spin Slashes to take down the small eyeballs. Definitely with that level 4 sword, no trouble at all. Opting to go a little bit ballistic and go close quarters here on Vitreous as Vitreus is completely cornered, unable to fight back, and Tiru is rewarded with another crystal there. It uh, looks like I was mistaken. Vitreus apparently had a quiver of 10 arrows on him. While this is the same category, still the wrong item. So with that being said, um, Eastern Palace is going to be the last crystal here for Chiru. It will be interesting to see where he decides to go next. Chiru hasn't checked the blacksmith or the purple chest, so I believe that's the play he's going to make right now, which is going to give Fajita Knight a lot of time to catch up. Does look like it is the direction that uh, Chiro is uh, is going here. Meanwhile, he's not having a little bit of trouble with the Samaria, though. Gets the block on the switch. Will be moving onwards uh, through this dungeon.
Tiru, if he's going the route, I think he is. He's going to check the hammer pegs. He's going to turn in the blacksmith. He's going to turn in the purple chest. But since he has the book, he's also going to be able to check the ether tablet. So that is the one advantage that he has over Fahita Knight in this particular route. Oh, that is true. And that could be the answer today, the Bombless Medallion. Otherwise, I believe we have pretty much checked all of the location with the exception of the shovel spot, which could still throw our runners here. My apologies. I, you, I meant to say Bombo's tablet. I said either, didn't I? Did you? I did not notice. <laughs> being in the area is uh, is always the most opportune time here as I completely forgot about the bat cave here and it's the bow officially Tiro is now in go mode wow I completely forgot about the bat cave location here but Tiro does hit go mode at 1 hour and 35 minutes here Will the be... powder was in Turtle Rock, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. I believe it was on the laser bridge. So you could call that a a laser bridge bow go mode. And Eastern Palace is easily one of the fastest dungeons to complete. So we are going to be heading into Ganon's Tower in, I'd say, maybe two or three minutes at this point. Definitely, of course, considering that uh, we have already visited the Eastern Palace, so it is just a dash for the boss here before we are onto Ganon's Tower. And it looks like Fajita Knight knows exactly where he needed to go, since having the powder unlocks only this one location. And with that being said, about a 60 second difference here. Vegeta Knight is also in Gomo. Now, I was mistaken, and Tiro never actually went to Eastern Palace. So it is pretty fortunate that uh, nothing big uh, turned out to be here. Now, of course, Tiro is looking for the big key in order to complete the dungeon due to this being his first visit here. I believe it is going to be in the last chest here. Uh, uh, in the last chest before the big chest. So I would say that um, that our runners will be getting their last crystal at very similar times so. here. And it looks like it was before the big chest, not after. So Tiru is wasting no time at this point. Let us do nothing is in his way now that that will stop him from completing this dungeon. Of course, Jesus and I following closely behind there. At this point, with how close our runners are, it's all going to come down to execution. Yes, this race may even be decided by um, by the location of the Bicky here, depending on uh, whatever route uh, each of our runners takes. And Tiru heading into his Armos fight, equipped with the Silver Arrows, this should be a very quick fight. Yes, this should not be any trouble. As it is only one Silver Arrow per Armos Knight. As we are now officially on our way to Ganon's Tower. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the Speed Gaming channel, so we don't have the official leaderboards active, but 
in any case, I do always love to guess, where do you think the big key is from 1 to 22? I'm going to go with lucky number 7. See, I am always a fan of vanilla locations. So my guess is usually the Armos Knight Ice Room, which is usually item number 15. Yes, we have not gotten very many vanilla items in this seed, so it would be very appropriate to, uh, to find the final required item of the game in its vanilla location. Here is making his way to the Turtle Rock Warp Tile, and it looks like the Hidden Knight is taking the dark side, or the the Dark World route up the mountain, which I do believe is slower compared to the Light Side route. That is correct. If the portal on Turtle Rock is already open, uh, using the Turtle Rock Warp is uh, a slight little bit faster. Now. If the portal has not been opened, it technically is still faster, but it requires uh, a pixel perfect movement here with perfect dashes. So if it is not opened yet, the uh, the next fastest route will be uh, for you tonight, sir. Meanwhile, as we do see Tiru using the power of the seven maidens here to open the sealed Ganon Tower. As we will be starting off our countdown to the big chest. Tiru opting for the hope room first, which is fairly standard among most runners. Finding 120 rupees in the first two chests. Only a piece of heart here on the torch. Our runners do not need that at this point, so that does mean that Bob will survive for this seed. Fajita Knight looks like he's skipping the right side and opting to go with the left side first. Oh, interesting choice here. Items number four and five look to be a small key. Magic at six. That is a very nice item to find in Ganon Sour. And it looks like the fifth 300 rupee drop is your lucky number seven. Figure that, getting the jackpot with lucky number seven. Mad chest, only 50 rupees. A mere consolidation price here as we move on. Into the Gangs Tower 2 is showing us the Blue Boomerang's prowess here. Both runners in the same room at the same time. Yes, of course, Fujita did make up a little bit of time by uh, skipping the right side here. As we find Quake which is completely useless to us. Up next is the randomizer room. Items 10, 11, 12, and 13. Bombs, rupees, more bombs, and more rupees. Random room is not the answer for us today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going further towards Bob Chest, and by extension, it's vanilla location. I honestly cannot remember the last time I've seen a race this close. 
at this point, whoever makes a mistake is going to be the one to lose out. Yes, this is definitely... Oops. Jeet and I, unfortunately, pushing down on the last second there. Will be bumping his way over this visible bridge here. As we will visit uh, Amos on ice. Gita opting to heal Bob here to release him from his imprisonment. As we will see the next few chests here. And item number 17, also the vanilla room, not quite right, but either way, Tiru is going to mirror out and make his way through the gauntlet. Definitely, and with that being said, Vegeta Knight, only seconds behind receiving his big key, will be mirroring out immediately as this race just became serious. Now, while our runners are making their way up, what's he going on here? What will our lucky, uh, our lucky chat man see for guessing 17? Well, like I said, this isn't the Speed Gaming channels. However, they will leave here today with my undying love and affection. And I can tell you for sure, ladies and gentlemen, that is a great deal. Meanwhile, returning to the race at hand here, we do see Tiru entering the gauntlet with silver arrows, gold sword, red mail, and more than a full line of hearts. There should not be any trouble as well as half magic for either of our runners here. Hero having a little bit of problem with these conveyors. Of course, the, the Gauntlet notorious for for its uh, sheer brutality here. Of course, um, intended as a as a gatekeeper for the experienced runner here. Tiro will have to be careful. Is at half a heart here. We'll opt to Power the Fairy here, which will start the Land Molar cycles early, but uh, having half magic and the Fire Rod, I doubt that this will take um, any longer as normal. Tiro getting a very clean two cycle Land Mo 2. Vegeta making his way up the tower right now as Stereo dashes across the eye bridge. I always thought it looked like a little face with the bridge being the mouth and the two eyes being on the wall. Vegeta also opting to use the powder here. We do get another beautiful revert here from Fujita. We'll be heading upstairs as well, treading in Tiru's footsteps, still closely behind. I do really enjoy using the Pin of Samaria in the Vids Rope Room. That's always so satisfying when they all die at the same time. That is very true. Getting a setup like that is is surprisingly difficult. It looks pretty easy just to put a book down in the cross section of uh, three bit wiz robes, but with the inclusion of the um, of the moving floor, it is uh, pretty easy to have the block slip out of sequence here 
as Jerry takes down Muldum to get a bundle of extra arrows here in case he runs out on the Ganon fight. But well, with that being said, Tiro is onto Agnum too. The key tonight having a little bit of trouble navigating some of these rooms. It is going to cost them some very valuable time. Yes, thankfully though, neither of our runners has uh, has any clear advantage in terms of items. Both of our runners being on Red Mill Gold Sword, as well as having Silver Arrows. And it looks like Tiru getting a pair of two cycles for the first two rounds of the uh, Aghanim 2 fight. Unfortunately gets hit by a Bool, which uh, which throws him off ever so slightly. Has to go for another couple of rounds here. Does take down Aghanim in the end though. And with that, Vegeta is in the modern refight as Tiru will be heading towards the Ganon fighter. And Fajita Knight also getting his arrows as the prize for Moldorm 2. Shiru wasting no time getting straight into the fight with Ganon. That space cadet blow indeed. As we will see a pretty much uh, walk in the park Ganon fighter. Of course, anything can still happen within the Ganon fight itself, but with Butter Sword, the faces should be taken care of pretty easily here. Of course, uh, Tiro will have to watch out for the Fire Bats as they still do quite a significant amount of damage as well as Ganon himself. Ganon himself should pose no real trouble. At this point, it looks like the only way Chiru could conceivably lose would be if he were to accidentally get hit and fall off and be forced to restart the fight. That would definitely be very unfortunate here, as Vegeta does finish up Agnum too. Meanwhile, on the other side, Chiru does uh, execute the torch glitch by lighting the left torch before the right one goes out thus uh, skipping the trigger for the right one ever to go out, which, well, our runners have half magic, so it definitely will not be a cider here, as we do see a nice double here from Tiro, takes down Ganon swiftly and easily, and will be claiming his Triforce as Vegeta into the Ganon fight right now. As uh, Tiru finishes with an official time of 1 hour, 52 minutes and 12 seconds. Get your GG's ready in chat, guys. Fajita, Fajita Knight likewise having no issue whatsoever with Ganon. Already in phase 3, um, he's got a little bit low on health, but he does have a fury in a bottle, so I imagine he's not too worried even if he does take a death here. This is definitely looking like a textbook fight here. Unfortunately, it's unsuccessful in getting the torch glitch. Of course, as I mentioned, with half magic, not that big of a deal. As I believe we are one arrow away here. Does get it before the torches go out. And that is going to be it for Fiji tonight. We'll be claiming his spells over the tripods as well. As Vegeta Knight finishes with a time of 1 hour, 53 minutes and 37 seconds. Less than a minute between these two runners for an almost 2 hour seed. This has definitely been a you know, a great display of, of the sheer prowess of both of these runners here. 
Yes, for as long as this seed was, they were pretty much neck and neck the entire time. There was that little bit of divergence where, you know, when they first got into the Dark World, but for the most part, they were neck and neck. Yes, and it does look like we uh, will be able to have a post-race interview here. Uh, we do have Tiru in the waiting room. I'll drag him over once we get uh, Fiji tonight in the in the channel as well. Here, Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Vegeta will be joining us for an interview. Chiro on the other hand uh, is here for an interview. Hello, Chiro. Congratulations and GG on that race. Hi, Stan. Is my audio coming through okay? Uh, yes, it sounds it sounds great. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, congratulations uh, uh, to uh, Vegeta Knight on a very close second. I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's... Yeah, it was a very close fight, a, a very close race the entire time. There was a little bit of route divergence when the when you first got into, uh, first got into the dark world. Um, you opted to go to Swamp Palace, and Fajita Knight opted to go to Skull Woods first. Um, but other than that, it was still very close. Well, I I had two major mistakes. Uh, the first was going to pod and only getting one of the mitts, I completely forgot that uh, I could drop down there and, and get another item. Uh, so that was just ridiculously stupid. And then I had a good 30 seconds of mirroring and fluting around like an idiot, uh, trying to remember how to get the North Dark World um, without, without gloves. <laughs> yes, the gloves were, were rather late for this seed. Um, now, it does look like we have Fujita Knight in the waiting room as well. I shall be dragging him in as well shortly here. And here's Fajita Knight now. GG, good race to both of you. Good race, man. Uh, yeah, GG. Uh, we were just talking about Tiru uh, accidentally having to double dip Turtle, uh, not Turtle Rock, but uh, Palace of Darkness. He only got the power gloves and did not get the titan's mitt the first time around yes of course considering that um also both of the glove upgrades uh were in the palace of darkness for us today well i i was down to the point where the only two spots i could have gone were back to palace of the darkness or to get the one item in swamp that i missed those are the only two places i could possibly have gone um i don't know what the last swamp item was but i'm glad uh pod turned out yeah that item in the left side of swamp palace turned out to be a magic potion i could use that Tira, did you go to uh, to Pod as soon as you uh, got through to the Dark World? No, uh, th they were they were saying that I went to the Swamp, uh, you went to, to Skullwoods. Um, I I forgot how to get to North Dark World without clubs. <laughs> uh, I completely, you know, uh, blinked on that one and ended up just running around like crazy for a little while until uh, I <laughs> I got. Until I eventually went back to pod, and then I got the gloves, and mirrored out, and started doing glove stuff, and then I had to go back for the mitts. So it was, right. um, it was, it was a mess. I, 
I was, when I got the GT and, and you hadn't that done yet, I was staring at my speed racing screen the entire time. Yeah, by the time you finished Eastern Palace, um, Fajita Knight was maybe a minute behind you. Um, Fajita made up a little bit of time because he had already checked Eastern Palace once. Um, but it ended up not really mattering since the big key was in the vanilla compass chest. Yeah, I got lucky not having to do the full route to vanilla big key chest. Uh, finding the bow, was a, that was a long time to get the bow. We got yeah, silvers just... right away. I mean, look at my, you know, my collection rate's pretty high. Yeah, the other time save ended up with Fajita actually not checking the right side of Ganon's tower. So those two item locations he skipped entirely. Um, where where was the uh, where where was the other major? I mean, it was it was pretty it was pretty bottlenecked for I mean, at two points in the race. But where were the major differences from the or was there any? Just execution. <laughs> uh, a lot of the end race came down to execution. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, once the two of you made your way into Turtle Rock, it was pretty much neck and neck the entire time. Um, Tiru had ended up clearing a, uh, the items from Meyer first um, and getting right. the book and checking. I want to say I want to say he checked Ether Tablet before heading into Turtle Rock, but I besides Ether that, after Turtle Rock. Oh, was it after? Yeah, I, I cleared Turtle Rock, and then I, while I was still up there, Ether was the only thing I had left to do, so I checked Ether. Um, I was still looking for Bo at that point before I dived back into Mire. Um. Yeah, and honestly, it looks like, as far as the late game is concerned, the only thing that really decided it uh, was that unfortunate death in Misery Meyer by Fajita Knight. Um, because other than that, the execution was pretty much spot on for both of you. Yeah, that was a, that was a re that was a really dumb death. I was really frustrated by that. And then immediately used a red potion instead of my lamp <laughs> when, I, when I got back to that same room. So uh, <laughs> that was dumb. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, Fajita Knight, but... Uh... My my nerves were were on max the entire time. This was the first time that ever I'd ever been streamed, and I I don't even have chat enabled on my Twitch stream. Uh, that's how that's how little I I I'm used to people watching. So I was very nervous. Well, I am honored to say that uh, that the both of you did an amazing job uh, uh, finishing as close as you did only. Only pretty much a Ganon fight uh, away from each other. Of course, wow. during the race, uh, both of your routes did uh, did deviate quite a lot, but it ended up uh, uh, going to this going to this one location to just get the uh, key progression item, which pretty much pulled uh, both of your routes together at the same time again. Well, that, I was just, a, that was that was a fun race. Oh, I was that was uh, I was you know it was uh, turned out to be really close. It was it was also a pretty fun seed in the end. I mean, I'm glad I didn't have to search all over the entire world to find the bow, but uh, that was uh, it was it was good. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that that was one of the things that we noticed. You going immediately to the magic bag, which obviously turned out to be the right move. Uh, I was actually kind of happy to see you not wasting time with other locations on that. Well, I figured I figured that was the the quickest location to check, and uh, honestly, other than uh, other than uh, the Pyramid Ferry, uh, that was the only one I was going to check before I jumped into Ice Palace. But yeah, both of us were a little worried that. Uh, the bow would be in Cold Stairs domain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we had um we had a lot of safety. Uh, I mean the red mail and the butter sword. You know that we got those fairly early. We, the sword upgrades we got fairly early. Um, not so many hearts, uh, but at least we had the you know the mail as safety. 
Well, yeah. with that, Tiru, you move on to two and zero. Oh. Um, for here tonight, you are now one and one. Um, so I definitely look forward to seeing both of you compete again next week. We'll see where the uh, Swiss rounds take you from here. I just want to say thank you to Fajita Knight for, you know, we were talking before the race and it was a pleasure, you know, having that conversation to, um, I, I'm not trying to say your names, you know, SVOP and, and Shidokin for commentating, uh, Kippy for restreaming, uh, Data I assume was uh, tracking, so thank you to everybody for uh, helping out. That is correct, and of course, uh, a big thank you to uh, both of these runners here, Tiru and Fiji tonight, of course, putting up this amazing display here, uh, finishing so close as they have. Of course, thank you very much for, uh, for running. Yeah, this guy, for guys, uh, just just to echo, thank you very much for for streaming and commentating and tracking and all all of it, and uh, congrats to your uh, well done. Thank you. Good game. Good game. And with that, we will be calling it a day here. Um, my name is Bistan. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to my co-commentator for, uh, for joining me on this one. It's been a great race. Yeah, do make sure that you follow this channel and the other randomizer channels, as well as the speed gaming channels. Um, it looks like we're going to be heading over to the randomizer four channel for a race already in progress. So. Take your time and have a good night.